Andreas, welcome to TFNN. Thank you for having me, Tom. So, you know, let, let me ask you, uh, well, first off, uh, you know, it's pretty cool that we got a, a fund down here. So what made you open the fund? Well, so I previously was based in, in Stockholm, Sweden, and was uh, working as an early stage investor there. Okay. And um, you see a lot of parallels between cities that have emerged as leading technology ecosystems in Tampa Bay. We have an incredibly strong uh, underlying technological ecosystem, particularly within cybersecurity companies. Yes. And what we theorize is going to happen is as many of these companies begin to exit and, and become public, uh, the employees of these companies, you know, once they've gone past their, their earnout periods, are going to become incredibly interested in either funding companies that their friends are starting or to start companies themselves. So the timing for launching an early stage vehicle seemed to make a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, it's cool. It's so cool what you just said. Um, so the CEO, the, the Stu that started No Before, I know him really well. We, we had offices right next to each other. Um, which, and, and what happened, folks, is that uh, you've actually, Stu was on, and uh, the bottom line is that this turned into, it's a $3.2 billion company now. And you know, it's amazing, Andreas, and I'm sure you know this because you're in that business. We were in Cleveland Street in an office building, and I saw him start as a one-person firm. <laughs> and it was his second go at get-go. So pretty cool, man. Um, so your, your first, your first uh, funding, your first funding, uh, tell, us, tell us about that. Sure. So um, we publicly announced our existence in, in May um, and then subsequently followed that up with fairly quickly with an investment into a company called Procoto. Um, and Procoto is a procurement software company. And, and unless you've worked inside of enterprise companies, uh, procurement software is not something the average person would deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But yes. if you look at publicly traded procurement software companies such as Coupa, you can see that they are able to garner incredibly high valuations and become incredibly strong businesses with relatively low amounts of capital raised. And what Procoto's vision is to do is to take some of the tools available to the enterprise uh, in terms of managing their spend and understanding contracts and, and creating automations surrounding when contracts renew and, and the entire management of that process and, and really diverse, uh, kind of democratize the process and bring it to small and medium sized businesses. So we're incredibly excited to back them. I believe we're one of the first Florida funds to ever lead a seed round investment into a, a Y Combinator company, which is the accelerator program that they graduated with. Uh, other Y Combinator companies that you may recognize are Airbnb, Stripe, uh, Dropbox, and Coinbase. Uh, so we're incredibly excited to have them here in the Tampa Bay area and, and, and to have that as our first lead investment. Yeah, no, it's pretty cool, man. I, I had Michael Otis on and, you know, understanding, you know, price-wise, he's bringing that service down pretty dramatically. So I, and I understand exactly what you're saying. It's really not a retail situation, but... There's a, there's a big demand for that, right? That's the real bottom line, right? Yeah, correct. I mean, if you think of other companies who have, who have taken similar approaches, um, one you may be familiar with is, is Gusto or Gusto. Yes. Uh, which did the same process for, for human resources software. Uh, there's there's a currently a trend of, of taking these business models that have been successful in the enterprise and finding ways to democratize them to much larger total addressable market sizes of, of small and medium sized businesses. Nice. Now, let, let's picture that we get a lot of entrepreneurs out here, whether they're, they don't have to be just be in Tampa Bay, they could be right across the country. So if they want to do business with you, how do they pitch you? How, how, this, is, this is really cool having you on too, because the, the bottom line is that we're in the public markets, but I've never had a venture capital guy on, meaning that, so how, how do people pitch you? Well, I think you have to, I think kind of looking up at a, at a larger scope, uh, you have to understand the very, the, the very nuanced differences between uh, early stage investing and, and public markets investing, okay. such as some of your audience does. Yes. So if you were to open a hedge fund or, or become a trader, really your, your returns are a function of selection, whereby we all have relatively the same information. Uh, we can pick from the same basket of stocks at the same price. Uh, and, and your returns beating mine would be a function of how well you select companies. In venture capital, your returns are really a function of access. So for us, uh, what we're really trying to do is develop relationships with 
the most promising founders locally, yes. and they're going to tell us what they're working on. Okay. Um, so, but from that perspective, I would say for someone who's going to pitch us, the three things that are really, really important for us is, is one, do you have an understanding of your customer and why your customer needs your product? And that may come from either having been your customer at one point or having served your customer in another role. But, but having that unique insight is incredibly important. Um, the second would be a very clear road to commercialization. So while we're certainly funding companies that, um, that may be a pre-revenue or, or very early in their life cycles, uh, at least a very structured plan as to how they're going to develop over time is incredibly important for us. Okay. Um, and then the final is, is that it has to be in a space that's highly scalable. So as venture capitalists, we, we simply don't have the holding periods that some other investors have. Uh, so we need companies that can scale up and become very large very quickly. And, and there's a few facets that, that allow them to do that. So those three things would kind of be the main things we look for in an investment. And, and in the Tampa Bay area, how many other venture capital firms are there? Not exactly. Um, realistically, in I general. would say there's there's maybe two others. Okay. Um, the Florida funders and seed funders, but I would I would say that we're certainly the only ones in our space and and the only the only firm locally who's dedicating all of its capital to Tampa Bay based companies. So over the course of the next three to four years, we're going to be investing in 19 additional companies with with Procodo uh, being number 20. Um, which is incredibly exciting for us because that gives us the opportunity to create hundreds, if not, if we're really successful, thousands of local tech jobs uh, and really transform the area over the next 10 years. Well, I'll tell you from experience, um, I've been down here for 22 years, right? But I'm from Boston mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone thinks Boston was always like it always was. I had an office in Kendall Square and I remember the first time, the, the, now I'm going back to 1980, Andreas, okay? But the bottom line is, is that there wasn't even venture capital there in 1980. I mean, if, when we opened the office in Kendall Square, that was the first, like, that's where all the bi biotechs had started. So it's incredible and really cool understanding that you're open because it changed Boston. And it, it took, you know, 30 years. But the bottom line is that, you know, before it was still, you know, you, you, actually Austin was still basically the, the the triangle in North Carolina and Silicon Valley. But, you know, at one point, Boston was the same way, man, which I know when I tell people that, they say, what are you, crazy? I says, I'm telling you, man, I was there. I know. You know what I mean? So pretty cool, man. Well, listen, congratulations. Great speaking to you. Look forward to having you on again, man. And I hope you make billions, man, because I, I know what a firm like you can do for this area. And it's really cool, man. Great, thank you. It was a pleasure being on. Absolutely. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.